We're scrambling, trying to get ready. Been in the garden all day, oh, trying to do all <laughs> kinds of stuff. Here we come. Hello, now, everyone. We'll stop the world and melt with you. <laughs> oh, I got a letter about the eclipse. You guys aren't going to like it. All right. Hello, Littleton, Colorado. I got my uh, my notifications. You get your notifications? I did, too. There you are. That was a nice proclamation that the president made, wasn't it? They've been doing that thing for like 11 years or something. They He did a proclamation back in like 2011 or something. I don't know. Somebody did. But, I mean, that was a quick smack in the face to do that right on Ishtar, which, you know, <laughs> I can enlighten you a little bit about Ishtar. <laughs> but, I mean, nevertheless, it's a Christian holiday that, Folks, you know, revere, and for him to put that information out like that. Who smack, smack! Don't you guys get it? All right, let me try to get over here. We're gonna get right into it. I'm gonna share with you guys this letter. We're gonna talk about it and see what you guys are thinking about it because this next week, the ten days, it's gonna be very, very exciting. I think so. <laughs> it's very, very gonna be very exciting, ladies and gentlemen. All right, if you guys are just showing up, please give us a thumbs up when you show up into the room. It helps get the algorithm motivated so it sends it out to all the subscribers. Because a lot of people are being unsubscribed from our channel. I mean, I could go on and, and cry you a river about it. But it's up to you guys to share the videos and to show up and check it out. Because YouTube is going to funnel you away to the stuff that doesn't matter. The saying is, teach them everything about nothing. Did you? What Nora says, second bridge hit in Missouri. It was in Oklahoma. Oh, what happened? Oh, you know, bars just smashed into it. You know how like all the fires are at all the, you know, at all the uh, places now they got the, they got the uh, barges smacking into all the bridges now. Right, when that happened today? And if nine days ago, if you guys didn't know nine days ago before the actual bridge collapsed, they actually had another barge take out in Turkey, took out all of, you know, if you guys were following me on Twitter, you really should. But the barge in Turkey took out all of their uh, transportation cranes that they used to unload barges with. So, just in case you weren't paying attention. And that's a big hub there, too. Yeah, that does, for that Turkey. takes it all over. Yeah, sure. Because they don't have a lot of water yes. around over there in Turkey, right? So, here we go. <clears throat> Let me show you guys what I'm talking about here. This happened... That just happened, pardon the language. So people were out in their boat. There's the big splash. There's the barge smacking into the bridge support. I think it's I-59. Yeah, I-59. See, I got a good memory. I, I still got it. Hold on, give it a second. All right, so there's a barge right there hitting into a bridge support right now. So, you know, this stuff always comes in several. Just like the uh, food fires, we always see the food fires popping up, boom, boom, boom. Everybody's like, oh, this happens all the time. So I guess bridge barges bashing into bridges is uh, happening all the time, too. But I digress because we're really going to be talking about this letter that I got. That I got to find for you guys right quickity. And Francis, congratulations. It's your first time here. So Yay! Francis, that was my grandma's name. It was my grandma's name, too. Who? Grandma Francis, my dance mom. Oh, I didn't. You don't talk much about old Grandma Francis. It's always Grandma Shoe Shop. No, it's great. You know, I just never call her by her name. I well, grandma. this is a first for me. Twenty-five years. Yeah, I don't think you've ever really brought it up. Oh, don't forget before the coming apocalypse solar eclipse, make sure you guys go to our website. We just launched our emergency candles. Okay, they don't really need a holder or anything. And that's got about 35 hours of burn time, 30, 35 hours of burn time. Those things are fat, like crayons. Yeah, they look like a big fat crayon. And they're going to be good in the hand. They purify the air. They help with allergies, all kinds of great benefits. Just look it up. They're 100% unrefined beeswax. Off grid with Doug and Stacy.com. Hit the shop tab. I'll leave a link for you guys. But we just launched those with a, with a solar eclipse coming up. <laughs> And all this stuff talking about the grid going down, you guys should definitely stock up on some candles. 
That way you can, yeah, uh, you know. Yeah, they come in all different sizes. Here's a little three oh, inch yeah. So you can see what's going on. We have them in all on. sizes, three inch, six inch, nine inch. You, and they're and wonderful. They have a them. long burn time and they're a hundred percent unrefined beeswax. Our family pours them for you. Yes. Lots of love goes into every single one of these candles. Yeah. If you only knew. You guys <laughs> they really do. should get some candles. They really do. Because you won't be, I mean, they're always good and, to have in your junk drawer. And what about the little bee that visited us the other day? You should tell them all about it while I find So it. it's unrefined there. beeswax. So all of a sudden. We're in there and here is a little bee flying around. The bee, because they know, <laughs> it flew in really quick and it was flying around trying to find the beeswax. Now that's turkey. Nine before, nine days before Baltimore. Nobody really talked about it. Nine days before Baltimore. I put this on my Twitter. That's a barge in Turkey taking out all of their cranes that unload their ships. But there's nothing to see here, folks. See that barge right there? No, this is just a thing. You know what I mean? Things. It's just a thing. Like we just run barges into metal stuff now. See that? Look at that. That's how they unload their ships there in Turkey. And that barge just floats in there. Blip, 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 blip. Yeah, Sharon says she had to resubscribe two times in two weeks. Oh, yeah, you guys, resubscribe, please. Lots of people have. They're going to be unsubscribing you. Unsubscribing you. All right, I'm trying to find you the letter. I'm sorry I didn't have it ready to go. It's my fault. 100% my fault. Oh, I hope I can even find the Dargon thing. I should have found it first. All right, give him some small talk. Talk him to him. Well. Talk, talk, talk. How many people are in the garden now doing stuff? Today I was in the garden all day long. Yesterday we were all in the garden. Today sorry. I'm in the garden. Sorry we were late. Yeah, it was kind of all of a sudden he's like, are we gonna eat dinner? <laughs> and I'm still in the garden. I still have dirty fingernails and everything. So trying to get everything done frantically because this week we're on the last day or so where I can plant my root crops and then I'll have- What do you mean by that? Because we plant by the moon signs. So this past week was a great time to plant your root vegetables like your carrots and your onions. And if you're gonna do turnips or your radishes or your beets, things like that. Um, so in potatoes, so we've been trying to get the beds ready and doing all that, getting all that stuff in. So I wanted to do that. And then this next week coming, it's going to be kind of a barren week. So what that does that time, mean? we're not going to, you don't want to really do anything. What is a barren week? Like, it's just not mean? a good time to plant because if you look at the, if you look at the moon signs, cause it's getting ready, we're going to start having a new moon because we're going to be getting ready for the eclipse. Oh <laughs> boy. But generally, right after the new moon, you're going to have the best time to plant your greens, like your lettuces and your kales and your Swiss chard or like broccoli and things like that that are leafy. That's the first week after the full moon. Found it. The first week after the new moon. And then the second week after the new moon, you can plant your flowering plants, like things that are real flowers or things that come from a flower, like your zucchini or your squashes or your tomatoes or your peppers cucumbers and things like that so that's how that goes so and then after the full moon you're going to go ahead and plant your root crops because when you look at the gravitational pull of the moon right now it's pulling from the earth so your plants are going to grow better they're going to be tastier they're going to be less pest they're going to be pest more pest resistant and then after the new moon, when you do your greens, the gravitational pull is pulling up. So it's going to make those greens, they're going to germinate quicker when you plant them. They're going to grow better and all these things. So I've been planting by the moon signs and it really makes a big difference. I can tell a difference. Things are still going to grow, but I find that I get better results from it. They're healthier, tastier. And so that's what I do. And you guys can get all this great information if you want to come live in person to the Homesteading Live Conference that Stacy and I host every year. Uh, this year we're in Vandalia, Missouri, May 17th and 18th. We're almost out of tickets. We probably have about a couple hundred left. And it is going to be a banger of a good time. We have some great speakers. Yeah, we got, we, there's, it's going to be just so much stuff. So we have a lot of speakers um, that are going to be talking about herbs and talking about 
animals and we're going to have forums on different things like gardening or on chickens. We'll have things about learning how to do apple cider vinegar, how to uh, make cheese, you know, just all these different things, kind of a lot of different things, a lot of stuff about your health. We have our naturopath, Connie, that's going to be talking a lot about health. I'll be talking about health. We have a lot of... Dr. Jones will be there yeah, talking about health. Talk. Dr. Patrick Jones is going to be there from the Homegrown Herbalist. We'll have um, Curtis Stone is going to be talking about lots of interesting things. Garden stuff and breaking away from the cog. That's right, the cog wheel. Um, and then we have Zach Bauer from American Homestead. Awesome dude. Talking down with some good stuff. Yes, we have the guys from Redmond that are going to be talking about lots of cool things like your soils and, and about cows. salt and about bentonite clay and about livestock. Mm -hmm. So we'll be talking about all that good we'll stuff. We'll be butchering animals live in person right there on the scene. Yeah, we're talking about essential oils. We're going to talk about electric Everything homesteading. We're going to try to get living. into a lot of different things. Yeah. Sourdough bread. We'll talk about kombucha, fermenting. We're going to get into all that good stuff. So... It should be interesting music. I got the Amish making lots of yummy things, you guys, to to you can buy and eat. Um, it's just gonna be a yeah. banger. Got music, lots of stuff for the kids, so it should be cool. And I cannot find this thing, man. I am looking everywhere for it. I apologize, y'all. Dang it! I don't understand where I put it at. I get so much information. But I am going to find it, and Stacy is going to talk to you about other stuff until I do. Oh, you are? Oh, Lisa says she got her new candles, and she loves them. I do. I love them, too. Well, they're really good. And the thing with a lot of the uh, beeswax candles is you got to be careful because they have the soy and stuff in them. They mix that stuff in there, or they use the bogus wicks. We use 100% cotton wicks. So we don't use any of that Yankee wick stuff that makes a weird smell, the paraffins and all that. Man, what did I do with this thing? Darn it. I'm going to find it. So you guys keep talking with Stacy, and I'll find it. For sure. Because I'm a sleuth. Oh, Rig6370 says, Riding with my husband, who is a truck driver, I have six heads of romaine lettuce growing in the truck with us. You see that? <laughs> I love it. You can do a lot in the truck. Um, and our friend Mallory from Barefoot Microgreens, you know, if you guys don't have your microgreens grow kit, go check out barefootmicrogreens.com because you guys can do that. You can grow all this stuff. Like we do it in our RV. I know lots of truck drivers do it. And then that way you'll have fresh food and especially everything that's going to be happening. Who knows what's going to be happening on this eclipse? So we all have to be prepared. Oh, and Robin says she used the slices of tomato method for saving seeds. It worked marvelously well. So if you guys don't know what we're talking about, at the end of the season, you always save some of your nice tomatoes, your heirloom tomatoes, and you slice them just like you put on a sandwich and you just lay them on a tray of dirt. So you can put them in a pot or a tray and then you'll just stick them. I stick them under the house where it gets really cold. This happened. Oh. And, uh, and then in the spring, like now, you're just going to go ahead and start watering. You don't do anything to them. They might get moldy. They might get yucky. It's fine. You're going to water them and then you'll have thousands of little baby tomato plants and then you can replant, you know, replant them and then they'll grow and then you'll have lots of tomatoes that you can use in the next season. So Robin had hers work out great. Found it. He found it. Oh, is this it? Maybe not. All right. So listen, guys, I just want you guys to be totally aware. Like, I don't know if anything's actually going to happen, right? But they're sure putting out a lot of signals out there. Now, listen. They are going to be firing up CERN. I'm going to do a video about it this week coming up. CERN, in case you haven't heard about it, it's this giant magnet in Switzerland. Off the chain stuff, demonic, if you will, dark side stuff. They want to fire up CERN during the solar eclipse coming up, and they want to shoot that thing off and, and magnetize Three and of them? dramatize uh, the whole situation, right? So I'm going to have a good video about that coming up this week. Also, NASA has come out now, and they're going to be shooting three rockets up into the daggone thing, right? So what could possibly go wrong? So they want to shoot. So all this stuff's coming out. First, I leaked that story, you know, about the biological people and all the stuff coming to a solar eclipse. So we're like, why is that happening? And then we start hearing more information coming out. I have more than just one or two states on full effect radar. 
uh, Arkansas, so many states now are preparing big time for A, influx of people, but B, they don't know what's going to be going on because there's some funky stuff going on. If we remember properly, right, if we remember properly, all of Congress got satellite phones. Do you remember that? you remember that? All the Congress were issued their satellite phones at the tail end of last year. Okay, what's that for? Never heard of that before either. Now, this is a warning from a secret intelligence leak planned April 8th solar eclipse biological attack. I don't know if any of this stuff is true. I'm just sharing with you what somebody sent to me. You guys, please make your plans accordingly. They are planning a biological attack on April 8th, just before the total eclipse. This is how it's going to go down. Plans will be delivering their payload. Planes will be delivering their payload in three intervals. First will be two hours before totality, a one hour before totality, and a final one 30 minutes before totality. The planes will be deploying a dry powder bacterial weapon. It, I don't know if any of this stuff is true. Again, I'm just reading this, what's, what's <laughs> been sent to me. I don't know if any of this stuff is true, okay? But please, you know, err on the side of caution. It will not be visible. You won't be able to see it from the planes in the sky. It's married to affect those uh, through aerosol delivery. The first two planes will be set at the standard altitude. The final plane will be set at approximately 10 to 15,000 feet. The path of the fly will begin in the northeast, and it will travel down the central path of totality heading west, southwest, keeping in place the totality of the eclipse. They're going to... Take this in the advantage uh, in the event because they know there will be guaranteed targets that will be infected and thus the vectors to spread the contagion. Symptoms will be appearing 7 to 10 days after infection, 30 days after infection. The media will be notice, will notice 60 days after infection, panic and all-time high, 90 days after infection, newly agreed upon UNWHO pandemic powers will be enacted. So I don't know if any of this is true, but I will tell you this. When we were down in Florida... We were talking with our farm sitters there, and uh, she said that she was watching something weird on, I think it was Facebook, that up in Hannibal, Missouri, they, uh, you know, they had chemtrails there pretty bad that day. And she said they were monitoring the hospital in Hannibal, remember, on all the people that were there. And it was a weird thing because, like, how many people did she say? 60 or 80? A lot of people. It was like 60 or 80 people all flooded into that hospital at that time complaining of respiratory or rashy or, you know, stuff like this, okay? People in the path of totality should go and should not go outside. I don't know if they're just trying to scare you guys or what, but bacterial payload will be loose, will lose effectiveness within six hours of post-deployment, half time, half the life, this isn't the one I wanted to read you, by the way, but this is another one, half the life powder on varying humidity and temperature, starting point is Canada and the end is Mexico. So that's one thing that I have there. There was another one that wasn't, you know, maybe it's creepy, but <laughs> I'll look for that while she's talking to you guys. Yes. <laughs> something a little bit more lighthearted than that, I mean, right? you, it is it's, what it I is. Mean, it's, it's, you guys, please freaky. pay attention. I don't know if you guys get it. There's something going on, man. It is funky out here in America right now and the globe. You know, uh, uh, dude, let's just stay focused on this here. All right. Yep. Well, let's see. Well, at least is everybody getting more done that we're having longer days? <laughs> getting outside. We are. It's not. Yeah, it is nice. But how many people? Okay, this is this is crazy. Have you noticed? I mean, I know a lot of you guys. You've lived your whole life. Blah 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 blah. And you know, as you get older, time goes quicker. But even people who are young say this. Don't you think time really is going faster? Now it just seems like you get up and then all of a sudden the day is done. It's crazy. Let I mean, me know. I don't know if you guys have noticed yet or not, but it's not Democrat versus Republican anymore. It's good versus evil. Okay? So I hope you guys are paying attention. Oh my goodness, where is it, man? I am so sorry, y'all. If I don't find it, I'll send it out to you on my email list. I'll find it. Uh, but if you're not on the email list, please go to offgridwithdougandstacy.com. And you have to fill out the bank, the part where it talks about, you know, getting on our email list about the Pony Express right on the front page there. 
And that'll get you on the email list. And we send out emails to you guys about some of the information that we find or just, you know, handy dandy things. Oh, Valerie says she saw my broomstick chicken head removal yesterday. Where'd you see that? <laughs> oh, Tara posted it. Panul. Oh, she did? Yeah. Oh, she never have seen that before. Ha, ha, ha. Works out good. It's great. Anybody can do it. Even little kids. Let's see. Man, I thought I had that thing so ready to uh, go. One Rupert Tone says, are the Amish going to be selling quilts? Oh, Ooh, I don't know. Probably not. not. Them, they normally, yeah, I, they just kind of make them for their family. I tried. I don't think they're going to have enough. They're and then they have their sale too. Like they have a big farm barn sale or whatever. So yeah, they every take all that to them. spring and every Mother's Day and then um, fall, they usually do have a quilt. They have a, uh, like they have an auction where the money goes to the schools. So that's usually when they do those. Man, I am really bumming here. This is not cool. It's not my style. Where did you send that to me at? People want to know where you get the candles. OffGridWithDougAndStacy.com. Hit the shop tab. I'm leaving you guys a link right here in the dealio right now. OffGridWithDougAndStacy.com. And then hit the hamburger at the top, the three lines, and then you'll hit the shop tab. Okay? Or you can use this link I'm dropping in the comment section right now. Oh, and Robin's husband got her tickets to surprise her for their 40th wedding anniversary. Yay! Yay for 40 years together. What was the rest of the story about the bee? I didn't interrupt her. Oh, the bee, the bee came in because there's bees waxing. And then the bee went out. And so then we opened the door and got the bee out. But they, it's crazy if you guys raise bees. And if you have, like, when it's time to get your honey, you know, you bring everything in the trays in and, you know, you're going to do it. You have to make sure everything is secure. You don't want the tiniest little hole in your screen or anything because the bees will be all on the screen because they want to come in. They know. They'll clean it all up. All right, here's another one. Supporting document uh, for my video, Two Weeks to Prepare. Please take a look at the pictures order right at the Eclipse in New York State Department of Corrections. Um, oh, I'm not supposed to talk too much about this because he says to kind of keep him on the hush-hush on the down low. But what they're talking about here is... Ooh. Eclipse Operational Plan. This is for the uh, New York prison system okay that they will operate on a holiday schedule no programs their construction will be canceled no construction volunteer services canceled no incarcerated movement in facilities no one will be moved from cell to cell we will remain in the housing using units no incarcerated transportation they will not be moving any people around administration from counties will be canceled that means if you're in the county and you're supposed to be moved to the big house you're going to be staying in the county Okay, family, blah, 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 for incidents which occur for, during the eclipse, which are related to the event, facilities and community supervision bureaus will be notified the emergency operations center. Facilities to perform a generator test no later than Thursday, April 4th, okay, 2024. I don't know why all this fluff is going on, okay, guys, but seriously, they are sending this out in New York to all the prison folks about what's going to be happening there. Uh, assistant commissioner of correction facilities notified no later than April 5th that, that was finished. Facilities ensure all diesel fuel tanks are filled by Thursday, April 4th. Facilities ensure all gas tanks, vehicles, and pumps are filled and assigned an assistant commissioner of correction facilities. Okay, you got that? So that means you should have your tanks filled too. Definitely. Operation plan for April 8th. There will be no incarcerated movement. Yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> so Void Dragon says, what potatoes should I buy to plant? Well, it depends on what kind of potatoes you like. So my favorites, I, I like the Red Pontiac and the um, Red Norland. Those are kind of the red potatoes. This is off the chain. And I also like the Kennebec. Kennebec. And it's a white potato, kind of like a baking potato. And then my other one, the, I planted three this year. And my other one that I love are Yukon Gold. They have the softer skin on them. And I like to make mashed potatoes with those. And they're very quick to harvest. So um, I like those because I'll get those first and I can start eating on them early in the season. And those are the three that I like. But it just depends on what you like. If you don't like a kind of potato, then definitely don't grow it. 
but it, you know, yeah, and always, also ask around, need. but also ask around what goes good in your climate and where you are, because there's different types and varieties of potatoes that go better at different places. Now, y'all, I don't know if it's true or not, right? Because everything's so messed up for us because, you know, we're just believing and wallowing in the lies. But I was I was watching a gal today who had found like an 1800s Bible, like way back in the 1800s. And she was reading the passage about Easter and the death and resurrection and all this stuff. And you know what she said on there that really caught my ear that I really never caught? Leave it in the comments. <laughs> She, I'm trying to find it. I don't know if I ever will because Twitter is kind of a mess sometimes with the way they do their showing you the stuff. But what she says was she was reading the actual Bible and it said on there that during this happenings, okay, that there was a solar eclipse. Oh, during, <laughs> during Easter? During Easter. During the death, burial, and resurrection. I won't call it Ishtar no, right, right. because Ishtar is pagan. You guys have been tricked again i hate to tell you this stuff but they got you guys celebrating ishtar the goddess of fertility painting easter eggs and all that stuff and your innocent little christian selves just adopted it and you have no idea what you're doing and now you know and so now you're going to look into it and then you're going to probably be even more disgusted okay because the enemy's here to steal kill and destroy and you cannot serve two masters and you cannot mix the holy with the profane i mean it's just that simple Oh, my goodness. So Tina T says she was told not recommended not to grow microgreens in temperatures above 70 degrees in my apartment. So Tina, I think what they're meaning is to grow sprouts. So microgreens are going to be done on a, in a tray with dirt. Um, and then you're going to grow like little bitty plants. There are sprouts that are done in a jar where you just rinse them with water and then they'll grow. So generally... What that means is in the in the summer months when it's more humid, like if you let if you lived in a maybe not even not so humid area, like if I was in Arizona, I'd probably do it in the air conditioning. But like for me, I will not grow any sprouts in the jar with just the water and rinse them out because the chances of them getting moldy is a lot higher. But microgreens, you know, I don't really have any problems That's with microgreens. Yeah. But um, it's just generally in the summer months, it, if you're in a higher humidity area, when it causes a problem. Because I'll, I'll always, I'll have a lot of issues, and, and then you waste all those seeds. So if you're going to sprout, I wouldn't sprout in the heat of summer. I will try to give you all the information right up front. So you guys don't have to drag it on. When we hang out for an hour and just talk, that's just because we're hanging out and you know, just spending some time with you guys, family for us. So we just hang out with you guys. We stop everything and come in here because you're like family and we love you guys and we want to see you and talk to you, see what's going on with you guys. On the Twitter too, I got people posting pictures about their food that they're finding at the stores and it's disgusting. Facebook actually uh, totally censored my video about the food from Aldi's, totally censored it 100%. So now the people at Facebook had to come over to YouTube just to watch it. It's just disgusting. Paul um, Thiessen has uh, another great idea. So, and the funny thing is, is, I was cleaning out my outside kitchen yesterday and uh, getting... Thanks, Murphy's! <laughs> yeah, we had some help, which need, we needed a lot of help. Yeah. So, uh, we I have a bunch of solar lights. So, usually when I find them on sale, you know, when it's out of season in the winter, I like to collect solar lights. And the thing that's great about them is if you need an emergency, you know, just have them outside. And then if you need, if you have solar lights too, you can bring them in and use those for lights too if you need them, if you don't have any electricity. And they work amazing. That's a perfect idea. So don't, don't, you know, you can go to the dollar store and get them for a buck. Just get a few of them, stick them outside, have them charged. So if in an emergency you need lights, there you go. So, All right, I found it. Okay, found plus it. I'm going to share with you guys a, a bridge, some bridge connections. <sighs> We're being set up, you guys. I'm telling you right now. All right, here we go. Currently, there are multiple terrorist cells throughout the United States waiting for target orders on weapon delivery. Now, let me tell you a little bit about this uh, letter, okay? Uh, basically, what's going on here is... Uh, 
Sheriff Rick Jones, which I talked about too, about his public uh, press conference, uh, was telling everybody to buckle up, right? We got some crazy people crossing our border. There's some things going on. I did a video about that. He definitely came from that uh, conference in Washington, D.C., and he was warning his constituents for sure, the sheriff was, uh, to buckle up Buttercup, okay? Now I'm introduced to the solar eclipse, and uh, this is basically kind of coming from some other places like this. Currently, there are multiple terrorist cells throughout the United States waiting on target orders and weapon delivery. They will hit two to four high traffic locations in cities simultaneously. Who's okay? hitting? The ruffians, okay? The people you don't want to have hitting nothing. They will hit two to four high traffic locations in cities simultaneously, large supermarkets, high schools or middle schools, and block commuter traffic and begin shooting people stuck in traffic. I don't know if this is actually going to be happening. This is a letter that people are, you know, that are sent me and are sharing. This kind of leaked out from somewhere. I cannot confirm nor deny it. It's best that you hear it so you're prepared. Then if you're just like oblivious that nothing's going on, got it? Here we go. Large supermarkets, high schools or middle schools and block commuter traffic and begin. Oh, man. Aren't most schools going to be closed? Like they did in Israel. It, no, I doubt it. In Israel on October 7th, local police will be overwhelmed and aren't going to be able to respond to them all. The second wave of Leos are guarding those targets. They will hit residential homes like in Israel. And then after that, the third wave will hit our infrastructure. You need to prepare, arm yourself, and protect your family and neighbors. The coordinator attack will likely happen sometime on a holiday or during the solar eclipse. And then it goes on maybe July 4th. I'm a retired Leo, and my information is from federal law enforcement. This is no joke. So you take that with any old grain of salt that you want. But I definitely wanted to make sure you had the information. Now, McDonald's. <laughs> Listen to this, guys. McDonald's? <laughs> oh, so during COVID, right, we were trying to get our T-balls, and I couldn't get them because the ports were shut down. Right. So he says, I can I can fly him into the um, there's a port in Kentucky and I can get him into there and you can get him faster. And I was like, fly him into the port of Kentucky. So I'm like, how do you do that? So I start doing some investing and I look up the port of Kentucky because <laughs> uh, Kentucky's in the middle of the United States, you guys. <laughs> but I find out that Mitch McConnell right? Set that up, emergency use type situation. His wife is Chinese, which is, you know, no big deal, except for she's a, a married uh, into our, is, you know, her family are the, one of the largest shipping people in China, CCP. Can you come on, come on, come on. So I found that information out myself, just kind of stumbling around looking for some answers for something. Okay. I was like, holy smokes, Mitch McConnell's Chinese wife, is CCP. That's just, you know, my assumption because she's owns the largest shipping co co company her family does in China. So you know what's up. Okay. Now, the bridge hits, uh, the Dolly ship hits the Francis Scott Key Bridge. Okay. The Francis Scott Key Bridge. The, now, Dolly and Francis Scott Key are actually together in history if you go look this stuff up. Francis Scott Key and Dolly were written about in history together in the 1800s. Francis Scott Key wrote the Star Spangled Banner, in case you didn't know. And in that exact harbor, I think, look it up, right there. That's the whole symbolism of it all. Okay. Now, as soon as the uh, boat starts being recognized as the Dolly, everybody starts digging in to where's the Dolly from? Well, the Dolly has CEO papers because, you know, you can track most of the stuff down. It's public information. McDonald's sister-in-law, you can't make this stuff up, is listed as the CEO of the company that owns the ship that hit the Francis Scott Key Bridge. Right? Mitch McConnell's? Mitch McConnell's sister-in-law, sister because she's Oriental as well. She <laughs> is in on that thing. But listen to this, it even gets better. Here's the twist. She dies several months ago. In a Tesla car accident, her Tesla backed into the water, into a lake, 
<laughs> and she died inside of her car. Now, yeah. I'm not saying nothing. I don't know <laughs> anything about it. But the more you guys listen to this stuff, you cannot make this stuff up. I couldn't make this stuff up. If I wanted to lie to you and just bring you all the conspiracy lies I could, I could not even make this stuff up. Seriously. Okay, Harry says... All right, hold on. Oh. That was 35 minutes. We got it all out into the air. I read you several letters that we've received about the upcoming solar eclipse. We talked about Mitch McConnell and the bridge in uh, Baltimore. Uh, we talked about our upcoming Homesteading Life Conference that you guys should get tickets to because we're almost sold out. We only have several hundred more. It'd really be fun to see you guys and you can see us live and in person. We're really going to have a good time. We're going to have a straight shot shooter there. He's going to have his trailer there, which is simulator inside of it so you can shoot the guns and learn your skills we're really we're really focused on god country family survival you know living off grid doing for yourself the most capable hand is at the end of your wrist the whole nine yards right we, it's time to flip the script we've been lullabied for way too long all right get after it girl so here he says should i throw away honey garlic that never burnt well, Harry, possibly was your lid on where it was kind of loose or maybe there was way for the air to get out. Um, I don't know what kind of thing you had. I mean, did you try to taste it? You know, your nose knows a lot, so just taste it and see if it tastes okay, if it kind of tastes for a minute. Did you do it about a month or so? Give me a little bit more information. Sometimes people say that happens and it could be... You know, you want to also make sure that you use raw honey. You don't want pasteurized honey. It makes sure it's raw, local honey. And you used fresh garlic. You don't want to use the garlic like you get at the grocery store that's already been peeled or anything like that. Um, but I would think it would be okay. But just smell it. Maybe give it a taste and see what you think. But give me a little more information. And Luna says time is speeding up. It is. All right. Uh, what are you looking for? Nothing. Got some answers, got some questions. Manuka honey is very good. I put some on my widow finger. I drug the, dr I put a oh, drill yeah. bit right into it. So, yeah, he because yesterday I go in the back room and there's like everything's thrown everywhere and then the band-aids and then I guess I had taken all of our good band-aids and put them in like a Ziploc bag so that everything's together. Because you know how you get so many boxes of the Band-Aids? So, you know, the big ones and small ones and you can never find the ones you want. So, I went ahead and I put them in like Ziploc bags so everything's in one bag. Well, he didn't look at the bag. So, he, he has tie-dye Band-Aids that I had for the grandkids that he had on his finger. And then today, he wanted to put something on it because he drilled a hole because... I got new doors because our doors have been, I mean, you go in and out and then we have these hard winds and they blow the door open. And so we've needed a door for a couple of years. And so I got two new front doors and I got a front door and a back door. So I'm very excited, but he drilled a hole through his finger. So I thought, you know, I'm going to go ahead since it was like a puncture. I put a little, I have some Manuka honey on it and then we put a bandaid on it. But Manuka is great. You know, and if you look at honey also, there's a lot of wonderful nutrition in them. You know, yes. comes from a B, so you're going to get some B vitamins also. But um, honey is great. So for me, I don't like to do a lot of sugar. But lately what I've been doing, and I also think it helps me sleep too, is at night we have a cup of tea usually before we go to bed. And uh, what I've been doing is getting a spoon. And, and actually, I love Manuka honey because it's, it's a harder honey. So I'll put a little bit on a spoon, and I, it's like my little dessert, and I'll just lick it like a lollipop. <laughs> And I've been doing a, like a little bit, like a nice size teaspoon. I'll have that before I go to bed. And I think it helps me sleep too. So if you're having trouble sleeping, and here's another tip if anybody, I know a lot of people have trouble sleeping. But another thing that's just amazing to help with your sleep is also that tart cherry juice. And that's wonderful. So if a lot of you have never tried the tart cherry juice, make sure you get it. Um, you know, usually in the glass bottles. Um, it's going to be very concentrated, 100% juice. It's not going to be, um, not, it's going to be not from concentrate. Um, and the tart cherry juice works good. Or if you want to try a little bit of the Manuka honey, it could help too. But that's my little sweet treat that I've been doing lately. Oh, 
vitamin, what is it? Vitamin of vegemin. Oh, vitamin of vegemin. Vitamin of vegemin. Did we poop in a bucket today? Yes, every day. Yes, we did. Sometimes twice a day. Just depends. What are we going to do to plan? Uh, Madison wants to know, plan on doing to protect yourself during the eclipse. We're not going anywhere. It's locked and loaded. Keep the gate locked, baby. <laughs> Who knows? I have no idea. I have no idea. All I know is they're, they got a bunch of little crazy chatter going on about all this stuff. And it's just kind of odd to me. Okay, CJ says... I don't put nothing past them, really. I don't have a homestead. Will it still help to come out there and make... Oh, my gosh, of course. Yeah, you're going to learn about yourself, about your body. It'll help you if you want to learn how to make bread, if you want to learn how to ferment. Anything. And you can live in a little it. bitty apartment. Yes. I mean, it doesn't make a difference. You're going to learn so I'll much. I'll take better care of yourself. Just don't... Usually, when I plan the, the people talking, I'll pick something maybe for the girls and something for the guys and then maybe something <laughs> making about food. No, I plan it because, like... Let's say you come with a husband and wife, or you come with some friends, or you have kids. So I, during, let's say there's going to be four, five, six things to choose from. There's going to be something for everybody. So definitely. I mean, we have a lot of people that will bring people that don't even care about homesteading, and they come back and they're like, oh, my gosh, I learned so much. So you'll get a lot for sure. For sure. Yeah. It will definitely be a great way to take care of yourself. Make sure you guys hit that thumbs up so we can get everybody knowing that we're having a live show tonight. A lot of people are unsubscribed from, from our channel since we're talking about all this stuff. And we really need your help staying, you know, in the people's eyeballs because YouTube's trying to hide us every chance that they can. Facebook straight up. Totally. <laughs> Throttled our video, man, and hit it. And it says it can't play it and everything about the chicken. Did you guys see that chicken from all this disgusting? This is where we're going, you guys. When well, you, you were just talking about chicken. I yes, mean, when you let China control your food uh, system, which is about happening here in America, you guys. We got They dominate the pork industry at, right now, as a matter of fact. And they're slowly going to be itching their way in everywhere. They dominate. Did you guys hear that? The pork industry in America, they own it. Okay? They own Smithfield. <laughs> Our largest pork producing and processing place is owned by China. Got that? You talk about who controls the food, controls the people. Hello. All right. Yeah, I can't oh, believe how fast the government was talking about paying for the bridge. Can we at least assign some fault? You guys, there was nothing accidental about that. I'm just here to tell you. My bones tell me so. My gut tells me so. My Ruach HaKodesh tells me so. Everything tells me so. My eyes tell me so. The only thing that tells me not so is the doggone TV and the talking heads. <laughs> Come on, what you got, girl? Stacy, for some reason, my sweet potatoes I've used to start the slips have not worked. How long has it been? I mean, sometimes they take a while, six weeks, eight weeks. Are you weeks. seeing like one little lone root at Any the bottom? Any little piece of one? If you do, it'll eventually do Here, it. Here, I'll show you guys Is it one. in a sunny window? That's a bad one. I know, but I'm going to show them a bad one. That's one that we did back then, right? Look at that little booty hairball. Well, no, that's a later one. Yeah. I did that, so that one later. Those are the two got. I did on time. So... Make sure it's in a sunny window. Yep. That one was not in a sunny window. I had it way over here out of the sunlight. Go get them. Show the other ones. I don't want to make them jealous. It's not. They're not that bad. Some people are even more than that. <laughs> all right. Here's the other ones. So when now you can see all the roots in the jar. Oops, over here. You can see all the roots in the jar, the big green there coming up. And then when they get bigger, we'll just pinch them off at the potato high. and then we'll put them in water and make some more roots. See that potato putting out all those roots? You guys. So here's the thing. If ears aren't doing it and it's been a couple months and you don't even see one little lone root, you might see a little teeny root. Maybe try to get it again. You know, I don't know if you got it from the store. They maybe them. they're still spraying them with root, you know. Inhibitor. Inhibitors. Who knows? I don't know. Make sure they're organic. Um, you're getting them from a good source. Maybe you know farmer. Sometimes that happens. That's why I like to do a whole bunch of them. I don't just do one because I can't. You don't want to put all your eggs in one basket. I always try to do quite a few because once you get them going, you're going to get a lot of slips from one. Listen, you guys. I'm going to be very serious about this. It's... You know, God's design is one plant is to feed you basically your whole life. 
Like that sweet potato, one sweet potato is going to feed Stacy and I till we die. It's kind of crazy. I've been raising these. You got for, that? Gosh, probably. Ever since we got here. Yeah. So these are the, the gift that keeps on giving. I use them every single year. All the seeds in our garden give us seeds every year. We, we bought it one time and we get the seeds every year. Man's design is to put you at the grocery store and have you coming back, coming back, coming back. Man's design was to break up your household, put your wife to work to increase the tax base while they devalue the dollar. Okay, it's to separate and break your family down so they can steal your kids. I'm, I'm telling you straight up, man. They steal your kids' minds at the public school, the trash that they're teaching at the public school. I hate to, to do this to you and tell you all this stuff, but I'm a realist, and you just need to know, and people need to talk about it. And... For a lot of you guys, I know there's a lot of people here who might be a little older and say it's too, you know, too much for me to garden. Or there's people that do live in an apartment or you have a house, you don't have a yard, maybe you don't, you're not able to do it. A lot of you guys, like I today, what I did was, I did something a little crazy. I have all these pots, you know, I have a lot of pots, lots of pots. And so I just put a bunch of onion sets in the pots. And then I have a bunch of pots. I went ahead and had some Yukon Gold potatoes that were really sprouting. I cut them up. I put them in. I have them all in pots. I have my red Norlands in there. I put I put a bunch of them in pots. So in container gardens, potatoes grow very well. Anybody can do them. You can stick them on your back porch and just water them, and then they're going to grow. And it's not hard. I've done videos on doing your potatoes and y'all really you can and just anybody can do it and it'll feed too. you you know if you want to just put them in the dirt try that too yeah just whatever you can y'all please try to grow as much food as you can this year this is the year no matter what what's going on yeah i'm all about god's design man the one seed i'm supposed to eat by the sweat of my brow it doesn't say nothing about sitting in a cubicle or, you know, I found a, my buddy, Zach, he, he drops some good memes sometimes. But he dropped a meme the other day about the woman, you know, how feminist women are supposed to be like, I don't want to be at home all day listening to my man boss me around. I'm a free thinking, free woman and I can be my own woman, right? And then she goes to work and works for the man all day and he tells her what to do all day. <laughs> this is how crazy we've gotten, y'all. Come on, we need to make families great again. Right? We need to make That's family gardens hat. great again. Yeah, we need to do hats. Dang, y'all. We are so messed up. And this money for the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. I'm on it tonight. Okay? The people selling out for the money right now is off the chain. Off the chain. Literally selling their souls and their lives for money. It is, it is disgusting. All right, don't forget to come to our conference, Homestead Life Conference. Y'all, we are teaching you the skills that matter, right? We do not want to teach you everything about nothing. We want to teach you everything that can help you live a healthier, better, more fulfilled life. That's what we're about. And we're shining, shining examples of it. We do it. You're dependent on Alpha Gale. I don't even know what it is. Alpha Gal. You know what it is? I never heard of it. Where is it? What does it look like? A L P H A dash G A L. I don't know. I don't know. I guess we don't have an opinion on it. <laughs> oh, Faith First Farm and Homestead, we finally got our first bag of Redmond Real Salt. Nice. Y'all, oh, yeah, stock up it. on your supplies. You could wake up tomorrow and the ninth busiest harbor in America could be shut down. For five to ten years. So please stay on top of your preps. Let me show you what I do. So I have two, I have two things of salt. Okay. In one, see, real salt. I have very fine salt. So I'll use that maybe if I'm cooking or I use a lot of fine salt when I ferment. So I use a lot of salt. And I use the fine salt when I do my soleil water. Then this one I have. Coarse salt. It's thicker. I love the way it tastes because it, they're bigger chunks. So 
it's sweeter. We're having a party. So a lot of times during the day, I'll just put a little bit on my tongue. Mm, mm. And then I'll drink my water. But this is great when you do your meats. It really makes your meats taste so much better compared to the fine salt. So I really do find myself using a lot of, and I lo love the coarse salt, even on my eggs and stuff like that, or my sardines. I love the coarse salt. Jason, this what? Jason dude says, we look old and poor. <laughs> we do? We look old and poor. We're not old and poor, dude. We're millionaires, okay? We live just like this by choice. <laughs> look old and poor, so the guy got a Rolex. You're cracking me up, Jason. Man, you focus on the silliest stuff. Old and poor. So we are professional YouTubers. <laughs> uh, come on. So if you guys are wanting to do the um the core salt, you can. So I really, really, really recommend you know getting both. And then you can go to Redmond um, on our site, off Red with Doug and Stacy, and you can get it in bulk. Like I like to buy it in the big bags, and then I keep it in jars, and then I just refill this when I'm done with it. And I love it. And if you guys don't have these, like, you know, little salt boxes, they're great because they're help with the moisture and then the salt, and they're just great to set out on your table. And I just love these. So, okay. Morals, yeah, we're waiting for the morals. We don't, we have never really hunted the moral mushrooms around here because they don't really grow in our woods over there. Well, we have to have the right area I, where we are, isn't and no one's around here has found them yet. I haven't seen anything about it. Have you? Mm -mm. And then, um, where'd you get your salt boxes? Believe it or not, Cracker Barrel. No, it, you're wrong. No, you didn't get none there. No, didn't you get teaser? No. This is oh, it's Bucky's. <laughs> I knew it was one of the things because we just got back. <clears throat> Dude, don't go to Bucky's. I'm warning all the husbands in the live tonight. Stay away from the Bucky's. I love Bucky's. <laughs> I love Bucky's. If you want to get a present for anybody, go to Bucky's. Yeah, they have these. I I love these. I got it. I got them at Bucky's. I got this last year at Bucky's, and then I got. My friend Tia got one this year because I love it so much. Yeah. So she can put her coarse salt in hers and then your fine salt in the other one. Yeah. So Bucky's, man. Oh, my gosh. And you guys, some, all these people came up to me at the Bucky's on the way back and on the way there. I was like three or four people each time we got gas. I was like, man, is Bucky's our people? <laughs> I wrote a song for Bucky's. Oh, my gosh. Have you ever made homemade root beer? We haven't done that one no. yet. I never did. But we can in Missouri. They actually have the rhubarb. It grows wild everywhere. Uh, and the root beer uh, plant. And so you could do it, no doubt. I, did it, I remember doing it back when I was in uh, camp when I was a kid. That's how I know about that stuff. Because we did it then. Oh, and you, somebody asked about what the Amish think about Jesus. About the same thing all Christians do. Uh, they are basically the Christian faith. They just, their Bibles are just in that old German and stuff, you know. Pennsylvania Dutch. Yeah. What's Bucky's? Yeah, you you don't you don't need to know. <laughs> you don't have them in South Dakota. Bu Bucky's, Bucky's is an all new phenomenon. It's, it is a convenience uh, gas station. Uh, like 200 shopping, pumps. Over 200 pumps. It's disgusting. It has a Over big... 200 pumps, but they're phasing out petrol, right? And they're going to bring in electric cars everywhere. But they're building these things in every place you can imagine with over 200 pumps, concrete out the wazoo. Yeah, sure. Yeah, and it has a huge dog walking area around the whole place. They have a big pond. Because there's quite a, there's a, there's a few in Florida, Tennessee, Georgia. Um, I know Texas, Missouri just opened one in Springfield. There's I know there's quite a few more, but they're popping up everywhere. And if you need a job, <laughs> they're starting like their assistant managers is like 125,000, 150,000, 175,000. I mean, it's a great place to work. They got good benefits. Uh, it, it, the cleanest bathrooms that you've ever been in. They're in a total solid stall, all uh, ceramic tile, very clean. I mean, it's just, and then actually there are a few kind of healthier snacks there, but they have uh, lots of clothes. They have shoes, they have knickknacks. There's, I mean, stuff when you went shopping, it's like the best store ever. Yeah. If you go, it's a, definitely a destination. Oh, it's great. You had fun in there. You got, he got something. You got I don't have fun in there. I sit in the parking lot. 
Yeah, he waits. He waits with the dog. I don't dog. go inside there. He comes in sometimes. So he comes in and tells me I have five minutes. <laughs> That's what he does. But you got the phone, phone thing. Oh! Oh, yeah. I got the phone thing. <laughs> I got sick of my phone falling off the dash. So I finally upped on one of those It's got a magnet. Cup and it hooks to the wind. It's kind of yeah, cool. It's fine. Mosquitoes. Yeah. Which ones? The Bill Gates ones that they released in Florida? I mean, are we in clown world right now where a man who just has money can just release millions, billions, actually, of mosquitoes that he grew in a lab. I mean, is that where we are in this clown world right now where no one even cares? And that actually did happen in Florida. Lab-grown mosquitoes carrying who knows what released to the general population, and no one cares. So, I mean, it's amazing to me to watch. It just really is. It's amazing to me to watch. And then I was just saying to Stacy last night, I said, Stacy, you know, in Missouri, I can go to the store right now and buy marijuana all day long. I can go right in there right now, buy some pot. No problem. But I cannot go to the store and buy raw milk. They will shut you down. I mean, isn't it disgusting? Harass you, throw you in jail. I have to go to a parking lot. And meet somebody and get your And do a milk up. exchange. Yeah, like isn't I'm that doing ridiculous? Drug, do drug deals. I mean, ridiculous. Think about that. Is it, what, what does our world come to? Do you guys, that's crazy. I'm telling you. Yes, that was pretty good. I like that. What's that? When you when you said that? Oh, I mean, it's just, it's crazy. crazy. I mean, this is the clown world we're living in right now, okay? Where they tell you you don't believe your eyes. I got some great videos coming up. This week. <laughs> uh, everything they tell you, man. Everything we've been warning you guys about ever since 2019 is all coming true. If you're keeping score, you know what I'm saying. You guys warned, 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 snubbed it all. Treated us like trash. And now everything is right here happening right now. All right, here we go. Let's get some questions answered. Then we're going to roll. We've been here 56 minutes. We appreciate all you guys. I just wanted to give you that information. Please, I wouldn't slough this one off. You know, in worst case scenario, you have some extra preps. Maybe you spend a little extra time with your family. I would err on the side of caution on this one. NASA firing three rockets into space into in front of this thing. It doesn't make sense to me. All these nuclear fallout specialists and radiation specialists and all this hoopla going on about it doesn't make sense to me. All of Congress getting issued satellite phones doesn't make sense to me. FEMA camps with the barbed wire on the outside with coffins in the back. Remember those back in the day I did videos about them. That doesn't make sense to me. You know, the whole Middle East stuff now doesn't make sense to me. Right? Israel starts here. Now they're all over everywhere. <laughs> that doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> uh, can I put used potting soil in the garden? Yeah. Um, but you're going to need to, it's going to need a little help. You're going to have to amend you it used somehow. It. Yeah. yeah. It, it, I mean, it can be like a bulk, but then you're going to definitely need to pump it up. You know, if you have any worm castings, if you have some comp, good, some good compost. Um, definitely, I would look into that. Wait up, hold on. Can you receive anything if there is no space in the fake sun mix with a flat earth body? You tripping bad. It's too much for people to handle there. Stacy, just curious. Why do you always wear a hat? Tell them, Stacy. Tell them. I don't know. I just do. I like it. Well, my big thing. I don't like my hair in my face. So. But how did it all start? Well, long time ago. When I was, te I was teaching, I, ta I taught in Montessori school. I was like health and um, physical education and health person there. And uh, they had a bad outbreak. This was like 30 years ago, over 30 years ago, over 30 years ago. And they had a bad outbreak of lice, which was weird. And then um, I was like, oh my gosh. And I used to wear my hair down. And so I just put it back in a ponytail and my hat. So I started wearing a hat and it was, I liked it. But I always kind of wore hats before. I like hats. They're just fun. So I've been married to her 25 years, <laughs> 26 almost. Every day of my life, I've seen her with that hat on. Except just a couple little times in there. 
where we have some little special occasions. No, I wear. I used to wear a hair on. <laughs> but for the most part, yeah, that's her all the time. Y'all, CERN, they're going to fire up the CERN thing. I don't know if you guys are paying what attention to this. What is CERN? Explain it. People don't this have This is like clue. this great big, just Google it. Google is your friend. This CERN machine is in Switzerland. First of all, I'm going to do a video about it, but the logo, they changed it. <laughs> but it started off back in the day with a circle and three legs. And it was a 666, okay? And it's a giant magnet in Switzerland. They turned it on before, several years ago, and they said they found the God particle. Don't you guys remember all this business? The God particle, it was all over everything, okay? These bozos are getting ready to fire this thing up after this five-year hibernation of it, or however long it's been. And they're going to swirl this magnet around and shoot it up into the solar eclipse. <laughs> Along with three rockets from NASA. Don't you remember? What was that commercial you guys remember? Don't mess with Mother Nature. <laughs> Do you remember with that commercial? Mm -hmm. I mean, what are people thinking? The high tunnel is doing good. We'll we're going to take you guys in there. Coming up here in a minute, I'm going to be all outside with you guys, showing you the garden. We're just putting some finishing touches on it. And really, it's been cold here. So we really haven't been doing too much. Our baby bell says, recognize a GT bottle. I use them. These, if you have friends that drink these, these are the best bottles everywhere. I save these. You can flip them up upside down they don't leak you can put i put my salad dressings in there you can put water in them you can put any kind of liquid in them these things are great and they're great to reuse when you make kombucha you can pour your stuff in there let's say you made um tea like oh so i saw someone in there earlier was talking about dandelion tea so right now this early spring that's the time to get um dandelions because they're not as bitter especially if you want to eat the greens but if you're starting to get your dandelions, collect some of the flowers, set them in some water, put a little vinegar in there because sometimes they have these little ant bugs on there. Um, and then put them in a jar and then you can pour some water over it and then put some honey in there if you like. And then you can make a wonderful dandelion tea. And then if you wanted to put some in some bottles, everyone can have a bottle of dandelion tea. But reuse these. These are great. Because a lot of times you get these bottles and you try to reuse them and then they leak. So if you want to pop this in your purse... And just carry around. It's a nice size. It's glass. We want to stay away from as much plastics as we can. We are being inundated by too much plastics. Everything's got plastic, plastic, plastic. It's going in our food, going in our bodies. Too much plastic causes wreaks havoc on. And you know the only system. reason why you guys have plastic is because freaking Rockefellers, okay, and the Vanderbilts and all them, they have to get rid of this stuff. So they talk to their buddies. And the DuPonts, and they all make the plastics out of their stuff so they can all switch the money around between each other. I don't know how hard it is to understand this stuff, okay? The reason why we don't use hemp is because it's a natural resource that rejuvenates itself. That's why they go to the paper with knocking down the trees, and then they cry about the trees being knocked down. It's like clown world all over the place here. It doesn't make sense. We're the only industrialized nation that does not use hemp as an industrial crop. And we have plenty of... Get rid of the soy and the corn and grow some hemp. A lot of people have the sweet potato slips we're talking about that have the roots. Just wait. You'll start seeing a little thing pop at the top and you'll get, you'll get your slips. Christine wants to know, how do we stay cool in the summer? Well, Christine... Luckily, he replaced our doors, our front and back door, because they face north and south, so we get good cross breeze. Um, and the trick is, without air conditioning on those hot days, what you'll do is in the morning, you make sure you shut all of your blinds. You know, you at nighttime, you open up all the windows and the doors so it gets cool. And first thing in the morning, you're going to shut all the windows and shut the doors to keep the coolness in the house. And then it'll start getting hotter, like a little later in the afternoon. Um, and then I go ahead and open everything up again. So, and then if it's too bad, you go swimming in the pond or <laughs> take a cold shower or maybe get in the car and the air conditioning and go for a drive. <laughs> Saw the three horsemen together the other night on stage, pulled out $25 million. And then they woke up and smacked you in the face with the transgender appreciation day today. I mean, you can't make this stuff up, man. 
some people are like, they've been doing that for 13 years or whatever. I'm like, yeah, but last year you didn't hear it on March 31st, did you? And the year before that, he didn't put out nothing about it, did he? You guys, stop excusing away every poke in your eye, okay? Because that's what you're doing. Making a lot of excuses for every poke that you're getting in your eye. All right. Can you use any of the dandelion flowers for the tea? That's dandelion what, yeah, that's what I said. Yeah, dandelion, use the flowers. It makes wonderful tea. Yep. We have a videos about dandelion. And then another thing, um, yeah, what is that video called? I, I show you how to make three things with it. Um, it's, I think it's three uses of dandelion. Yeah. Uh, another thing to mix with your dandelion is mint. Yes. So mint's coming up now, too, for a lot of people. Actually, yesterday we made, um, we, we pulled a bunch of mint, and we made a mint tea with honey, and it turned out amazing. It just, it is, it's just very refreshing. It's really good. So can't do, you know, if you guys aren't growing, you can get a little pot. Just remember where you put mint, it's going to go crazy. So make sure it's in, in, in a contain, container or in a garden bed. But, you know, there's different kinds. There's chocolate mint, there's spearmint, there's peppermint. They all have kind of a different flavor. So, you know, they're, they're all nice little things to have to add. And they make a great drink. You know, you can. it helps with your digestion. It's refreshing if you want it for something in a, on a hot day. This is nice. You can add it, when, you know, when watermelons are coming about. It makes a great salad. You can cut up cubes of watermelon with some feta cheese and some mint. Oh, it's wonderful. A little... Um, it's just yummy. Now, if you guys are following the red heifer nonsense, they're just getting you guys worked up. I'm telling you, everything is just to get us worked up. They've been doing this red heifer stuff. Me and Stacy have been following Torah for... <coughs> it's been a minute. <laughs> and they've been trying to usher in these red heifers for every year, and they get up right up to it, and then there's blemishes. They cannot have one gray hair, not one. So some farmer in Idaho or Iowa or Wyoming or Montana, somewhere like that, he's all got his little heifers together and sent them over there. It's not going to happen. And if you're actually paying attention, they cannot run those heifers up that ramp. You can't do it. There's protocol. So that's just, this is like a workup deal, I think. All this stuff like a workup deal, I don't know. But I don't, I don't really see that going down. I don't really see the red heifer thing going down. All right, they were they eliminated one already. That's what they always do. All right, all right. I got my first gray hair in the middle school. All right, <laughs> we're going to put you off the pasture then. Oh, yeah, con con contrary girl. Parents taught their children critical thinking skills. Stop that. How dare you? You know, I mean, there's a lot to be said for common sense. And just <laughs> to think ahead without having to be told to do something all the time. It, it's it's nice to see that, you know, when people can kind of figure out stuff without you having to tell, like, do this, do this, do this, do this. Yeah, it's true. All right. Well, how long has it been now? We're 68 minutes. I don't want to keep you guys too long. I hope you're subscribing to this channel, Partis. Partis Quan. We have fun around here. <laughs> and I dropped some bombs on you. Plus, we have 1,500 videos for free. Showing you how to live off-grid. How to live without power. We've lived in this log cabin. It's very small. And we've done it for 15 plus years. We've lived for the first We're going 13, on 16 years now. Yes. 13 plus years, we had no electricity, 100% zero. We were living off a generator, power on demand. Last year or something, we got some solar stuff, and it's, you know, not too bad. It's okay. And uh, we poop in buckets. We grow our own food, 90% of it. We live 100% off rainwater. That got kind of tricky because it really stepped up spraying, which, oh, my gosh, that's not real. But Tennessee is outlawing unreal things. Everything's a gaslight. I swear it. Elderberries, elderbugs. Oh yeah, Cindy Stocker. Make sure you protect your animals during the eclipse. What do you mean protect your animals? What well, does that mean? I don't know. Make sure. I don't know. What does that what's going to happen? What does that mean? Keep them in the house. What does that mean? Well. What does that mean? 
Y'all, the solar oven sold out. If you did not get your solar oven, too bad, so sad. I sent out emails. I try to tell you guys, you will never, ever see the solar oven at the deal that you got until they were sold out. But I will let you know this. If you want to save your pennies and get yourself one or get on the payment plan, you can get the sun oven. We are the only ones that have a 10% discount coupon. No other place can you get it as cheap as Off Grid with Doug and Stacy. Only because we're the number one affiliate for them. We sell more sun ovens than anybody because of you guys. And when I talked to them, I said, man, I'm getting, you know, some discount from my people. And so we settled on the 10%, plus you get Stacy's cookbook. Nobody else gets that either. So if you guys, if not you a got, whole book, it's yeah, a booklet. If you guys get the sun oven now, you don't get the package and all the free stuff no more. But you do save 10%. You do get Stacy's cookbooklet. And you should get one because it's a great prep to have. And it's a great item to use all summer long to keep the heat out of your house, keep your utility bills low. And it's just good to have. You can dehydrate in it. You can cook, you know, whole meals in it, dessert, anything. It's great. Okay. So Shelly McDonald says, coarse salt. Remember the yummy coarse salt? If Jan, Jan, Jan Harmone, if you want to get the candles, go to Off Grid with Doug and Stacy. I'm leaving the link right there. See my comment? It's all lit up there. And you click on that link and scroll down, and you can get all that stuff. We have a remedy book, Stacy wrote. We have the fermenting book. Oh, I have all the here. We have a cookbook. We have the candles. We have the stainless steel tea balls that we sell. Very nice. We have rest and digest tea, which helps you sleep overnight, helps you with digesting of your food. It's very nice for your mood. We have chocolate tea, which has theobromides and is a mood enhancer. It's very good for you, too. It's healthy. And uh, it gives you caffeine effects, but it's not, not jittery. Caffeine. It's a great so, coffee replacement. Yeah, you'll feel energized, but you're not going to crash or anything like coffee. So go spend some money at the Off Grid with Doug and Stacy store. And I'm going to give you a recipe. So... She was, Shelly was talking about core salt can be used for Coke desserts. So I love using it. And Shelly, good for you because I'm going to be making this tomorrow or the next day. So have you guys, you know, when you go to the store and you try to buy like the dessert bark? So simple. All you need to do is get some parchment paper and then get your favorite nuts. Do you like pecans or do you like walnuts? And I'll spread them out on my parchment paper. And then you can get cranberries, you can do raisins, you can do the cherries, you can do the dried blueberries, any of the dried fruit, um, apricots, whatever you got, dates, and then sprinkle that over that. And then sometimes people put the, um, I use unsweetened, but you can do coconut flake if you'd like, or you don't have to. And then all you're going to do is melt some of your chocolate, like your chocolate chips. And I like, uh, let me get my brain real quick. This is my favorite to enjoy life. There's no soy lettuce in. It's just the chocolate and the um, sugar. That's all that makes this. And then I melt it in a pot. You know, I put a little water in a pan and a pan on top of it. Make a little double boiler. Let it melt. And then I just drizzle it all over the top so that it's totally covered. All the nuts are covered. And you're, you're only going to make a little bit because it's going to be pretty dense. And then you're going to get this beautiful coarse salt. And you're going to sprinkle it really good all over it. And then put it in the refrigerator, take it out, and then you're going to break it in little pieces, like little bark. And then I put it in a, you know, container and keep it in the refrigerator and it tastes great. And it's, it's really cookbook. expensive. It's very expensive to buy. So that's a great recipe. But if you do any chocolate or if you do like any, make any kind of dessert with chocolate, this coarse salt is great. Yeah, we love it. Let's see, she's a part of our team, Molly, man. She doesn't go say nowhere. Hi to everyone. She's always right by us, man. We take it on RV trips. Everywhere we go, she go. She's part of our pack. All right. So y'all, you know, all I can tell you about that AT&T hack is button up buttercup. My phone's been acting weird. My other phone, my computer's been acting weird. I keep it catching it like glitching to some kind of a window and then going back. And you know what I'm saying? So... I am telling you guys, no matter what anybody tells you, they are doing stuff behind the scenes. Bill Gates and his crew, Microsoft, all these players are doing stuff behind the scenes right now, getting ready for the coming whatever it is. I'm telling you right, right now. 
I don't know what to tell you about it. You can believe me, you can don't believe me, I don't care. But I know what I see with my eyes and what I feel, what I'm, I'm, I just see it with my phone, glitchy. I see it with my computer, glitchy, popping up windows, updates, updates. I've never had so many updates in the last year and a half in my whole life of having computers. So y'all, just please, just please stay, just do the best you can. Stay in prayer, be vigilant, get your community on where you're at, where people can hear your voice and you can get that community together. Learn what you can. Okay, Urban Gal Farm, Farm Root says, she's making ghee for the first time in the sun oven and she wants to know if she should use salted or unsalted homemade butter. Yeah. You can do either one. They always say online to use unsalted, but I do salted all the time. So it's your choice. Okay. Oh, join the university, man. I didn't even talk. I don't even really talk about the university, guys, because, you know. <sighs> but if you guys want to join our university, Stacy and I put together a university where we teach you how to, you know, everything that we do. Homesteading, off-grid living, you know, I'm even throwing some crazy conspiracy stuff in there coming up. And we do stuff every Wednesday night. Mm -hmm. We have a live show where we do something. Yes. Like last Or week, talk about some. Yeah, well, well, it's like a class. Yeah. So last week we did a whole thing on companion planning. And I gave everybody all these options of what to put together, what not to put together, and then kind of talked about starting seeds. So that was one thing. Um Another time, what do we do? I can't even remember all the stuff we've done. We've done, we've done, we've done ferments. We've done. Uh, we talked about chickens. Chicken. Everything about we had a whole class on chickens yeah. and about all the cool things about chickens and everything. And so every week we pick a new topic and that's what we do. So it, it's it's really fun. We talked about growing the best onions. No, poultry. that's a video. We didn't do talk about onions. Right? No, that was just a video that we have up. Planting and growing by the moon cycles, detoxing in a toxic world. Yeah. We gave you guys some great ideas yeah. about that. There's videos on there how to make ghee, how to use Epsom salt. Probably one of the most underrated things you have in your cupboard. Uh, how to make apple cider vinegar. These are just some of the things that we have up right now. Since bee season's coming on, I got a how to make a bee swarm box there so you guys can collect bees yourself, local bees, healthy bees, and not be buying bees that are going to die on you and be sickly. Man, oh man, we got Stacy's recommendations on the seven superfoods that she eats and how she stays so sick. store-bought versus homemade i mean we just have a lot of good information on there we have a good time with that and it's really going to be lit coming up we're really going to have a lot of information for you guys for at the university no all my posts show up in chat i'm leaving the links right now university.offgridwithdougandstacy.com if you want to go there i don't think you can find a cheaper place to <laughs> it's nine dollars Right, that's a cheap. I mean, basically, just pays for our <laughs> servers and all of our stuff. So someone, I we have our own servers. It. We could talk about whatever we want there. So someone, I, I it went by too quick. Someone said they got the phone holder from Bucky's. <laughs> <laughs> I got him his funny gifts for some, some kids, <laughs> some friends of ours. Yeah. Vitamin vitamin, that'd be a hell no. All right. Rock solid. Just click the link and go to the Homesteading Life Conference and check it out. That's all. But I'll leave you a list of the speakers if you want to see who the speakers are. And then you can make your decision. I think I have some RV hookups coming up for you guys. Probably by Wednesday night at the university. I'm going to give it to them first. <laughs> and then by Sunday next week, if you haven't already got an RV spot, I think I might be coming up with like 5 to 10 RV spots. Also, the Vandalia Lake. Uh, by the fairgrounds has free public tenting like you can tent camp primitive camp there for free at the vandalia lake so you guys can check that out too see the people that stay all the way to the end get all the tips now bat we had a bat attack us a couple times <laughs> Well, he was scared. The Twitter handle is at Doug and Stacy at capital D O U G A N D capital S T A C Y all one word. Whoops. What's good for healing broken bones besides time? <laughs> um, 
come free. You know, there's there's salves and things you can get. I really like if you are have a, a place to grow it, comfrey is wonderful. They do call it bone knit because it just helps with strains and um, bone, broken Breakage, bones crackage. and healing. But Dr. Christopher, so Christopher, he has a bone and tissue formula that's wonderful. It's an actual supplementation that you would take internally, but he also has the cream that you can put on it and it will help the repair time a lot. So if you want to do some more research and look into that, it's Christopher. The bottle is kind of green, like a Kelly green and white, but it's uh, Dr. Christopher's bone and tissue formula, and it'll have a lot of wonderful healing herbs. And you can do research on it, but both there's the uh, salve and then also the supplement you can take. It's always been good versus evil. That's it. But what's happened right now is they got these Christians and everybody so lullabied and so accepting of everything. I mean, they straight got some of y'all accepting transgenders and <laughs> accepting that you can just whack off body parts and sew on new ones. I mean, come on. We have got to stop this clown show, man. We have got to. Like, everything is going to ride on this, what we're doing here. I'm just here to tell you. Uh, all right. We shouldn't have to pray the bridge company that... You're right. Who hit the bridge? They should be paying. Why are we... More... Hey. You know taxes is a scam, right? First of all, they steal it from you with uh, threatening you by throwing you in a cage. But, you know, they print money all day long. Do you think they actually need your tax dollars? <laughs> Don't you guys see this stuff with your own eyes? Don't you realize, 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 realize? Patriot Nurse has a link to Dr. Christopher. Good. We have a link to Dr. Jones. <laughs> Yeah, if you guys want any like uh, any herbal formulas, there's tinctures and supplementations. Um, Dr. Jones, if you go, you can go on to Off with Doug and Stacy and go on to the Homegrown Herbalist site and you'll get a discount if you go there. But the cool thing about Doc Jones is he has been a practicing vet forever and he uses herbs on them. And these herbs that you can use on all these animals are the same herbs that we can use as humans. So a lot of the supplementation is good for humans and for animals. So you can use it on your animals, your dog or your cats and yourself too. So I think that's amazing. So if you go check out his site, go to Oscar with Doug and Stacey, go to Homegrown Herbalist, check it out. You'll get a discount there too. But it's it's just so amazing. And he's got some really great um, videos on stuff too. So it's all about resources, finding where you can get good quality products. And that's kind of what we're about. All right. That's it for us tonight, folks. That's 82 minutes of pure satisfaction. Make sure you guys hit the thumbs up. If you need seeds for your garden, don't forget, we secured you a discount. Just use our link, offgridwithdougandstacy.com. Hit the shop tab. And scroll down to Sow Right Seed. Saves you 10%. All of our links saves you money. Yeah, my, the Sow Right Seeds have been doing great. This doing year. great. And we've had one person that said that they didn't do so well with their seeds. They told Sow Right Seeds about it. And they got immediately replacement seeds. Boom. So they're good with their customer service. And I'm seeing a, quite a few people are talking about dog food. Next week, do you guys want me to talk about how to make homemade dog food? We'll make it part of it. We'll part talk of it? Of it. Very, it won't take me that long. Yeah. Tell me, give me a thumbs up or say yes. If you want to learn how to make homemade dog food, I can give you lots of options. It won't take that long if you guys want to know. Because you're killing your dogs if you're feeding them kibble. So would you like Definitely. homemade dog food? Just like you're killing your kids feeding them processed food. And you're letting them kill their reproductive organs by walking around with their phones in their pockets and the small of their back and in the front pockets and on their leg pockets and anywhere attached to their body. I don't know how many times I'm going to have to scream about this stuff. If you bring your kids to the Homesteading Life Conference and I see phones on these kids, they are going to get an Uncle Doug smackdown. You got that? So make sure that if you're coming to our conference, I don't see that stuff, man. You are that Your parents need to start parenting. Quit trying to be their friends. Start parenting. Discipline is good. Kids like discipline. Oh, my goodness. Oh, Victoria. A lot of people <laughs> like dog food. And she says, I feed raw. Well, maybe, Victoria, you'll get an idea with some of my recipes. All right. So we'll see you guys on the next video. Make sure that you 
or subscribe to our channel. Share this video with your friends, even though it's a live video, because there was a lot of good information in here. We'll see you guys uh, probably tomorrow, maybe Tuesday. But I got some good bangers coming out this next week. Plus, we're going to be in the garden a little bit. I'm going to drag you around to the tunnel. We'll show you the high tunnel and a few other things like that as we waking up into spring this year. Okay? Smell you later. And remember. Say it. I'll use my hand. Is that what you want to say? Say it. Because <laughs> I'll mess it up. The most, the most capable, capable hand, hand is at the end of your wrist. That's it, man. <laughs> Quit looking for everybody to solve your problems. No one's going to do it. No one's, you're on your own. And we're just here trying to help you. We're just regular folk trying to help you. All right? We're here for such a time as this. Yes, we are. See you tomorrow.